Hi everyone. Today we are starting our fourth unit. It's called Chemical Equilibrium. Uh, so this will be lesson 4.1. Okay, so very quickly, we're just going to review chemical versus physical change. So you would have done this um, in grade nine. You may have like briefly talked about it in grade 11 again, um, and now in grade 12. So what is the difference between physical and chemical changes? So, so this one here would be our physical. This one here is our chemical. Um, now, in the grade nine level, sometimes what, what you'll be taught is that um, uh, physical change is reversible. So for example, the melting ice is reversible. You can refreeze water, right, to make ice again. Um, whereas burning is permanent. You can't change that back, right? So, so that would be the difference. Now, that difference is not actually true, um, and and the the it it usually is true, but not always, right? So the main difference between physical and chemical changes is that in a chemical change, a new substance. So a new substance is, I can't type, <laughs> a new substance is produced there, um, as opposed to a physical change where no new substance is produced, and it's just the shape or the state that changes. Um, okay, but what we're going to do, we're going to talk about this concept of reversibility now as it applies to chemical reactions. Um, so in reality, some chemical reactions are able to be reversed, and that's when we, we set up a, a system at equilibrium. So that's, that's what this whole unit is. Is really about. Um, so if you were in class, I would do the blue bottle demo for you here. Let's see, hold on one second. Ah, that's not what I wanted. Just a minute. Okay, I don't know why it's not coming up. This should be, <laughs> this should be a YouTube video there which is not working on uh, the iPad so I will post a link to this so so those of you at home can can watch this here but blue bottle demo shows um, it shows a chemical equilibrium so basically you shake this bottle and it goes blue and then as it sits there it goes back to becoming clear and then you shake it and it goes blue again and then it goes back to being clear um, and so it, it's a closed system and so we end up getting a, an equilibrium happening anyways we'll talk about that later well now it doesn't want to go to the next slide there we go Okay, so physical equilibrium, um, this requires a closed system at a constant temperature. So an example of this would, this would be evaporating and condensing. Uh, so we've seen this diagram before. Um, so this would be, you know, the arrow going up is our evaporation. The arrow going down is our condensing of the water molecules there. Um, and so here, though, the important thing to remember is that the rate of evaporation is going to be equal to the rate of condensation. Um, so when those two rates are the same, that's when we have an equilibrium. So it doesn't mean that the particles in each state are the same. That's not what that's saying. But just the rate at which they're changing is equal to each other. Now, in terms of a chemical equilibrium, this requires constant observable macroscopic properties. So uh, this would be pressure, concentration, etc. Uh, you need a closed system. You need a constant temperature. You need reversibility and rates of opposing changes uh, being equal. So we're going to take a look at here. We've got hydrogen gas and chlorine gas in equilibrium with um, hydrochloric acid in the gas form. Now, this double arrow here, just so you guys know, you'll see it drawn various ways. So, so that would be, the one I drew there is probably the most typical way of drawing it in, in chemistry. Um, sometimes you'll see it like that, or you can see it like that. So there's sort of three different ways you can draw it. Uh, when I'm writing, I tend to favor that one, but you can choose. They're all meaning the same thing. So in this particular reaction, then the rate of the forward reactions, this would be the hydrogen and the chlorine, reacting together is going to be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. This would be the uh, HCl decomposing into the hydrogen and chlorine. And so we would say there for every H2 reacting with a the chlorine, there are two hydrochloric acid molecules reacting to make H2 and Cl2. So one, you just need to remember that 
as the forward reaction is happening, the reverse reaction is also happening. So we've got this equilibrium um, occurring between the forward and the reverse reactions. Now we have graphs, so we can, we can um, show this graphically. Uh, so how systems achieve equilibrium uh, are shown usually through two different types of graphs. So we've got the rate versus time, which is your first one. Now I just finished saying that as um, when equilibrium is achieved, uh, the rates of opposing changes have to be equal. So the rates are going to be equal. So the rate versus time graph, when you get this plateau here, uh, when those rates are equal, that's how you know you've achieved equilibrium then. So the forward reaction, the rate of it is equal to the reverse reaction. Um, we could also look at it in terms of amounts. This would be um, concentration here. So concentration versus time. So if you look, your reactant starts high. This is the red, right? And then it comes down and then eventually it stabilizes, right? So there's no change in the amount. The products, on the other hand, um, here you start with zero, right? Because if a reaction is going, you know, from A to B, you're starting with all A and, and no B, right? But as we, as the reaction moves forward, we get the products also um, or the concentration of the products increasing through that and then eventually will also level off there. So then the rate of change is going to be equal for both of those things there. So the plateau, make sure you know then, so when you're looking at these on a graph, the plateau is where you have equilibrium. So I'm, I'll often abbreviate equilibrium EQ apostrophe M underscore. That would be a very common abbreviation for that. Uh, so a question for you. I want you to think about this and then we can talk about it later. Um, and at equilibrium, does the concentration of reactants have to be equal to the concentration of the product? So I want you to write that question down and have your answer for next time we see each other. Thanks, everyone.